it's immersion, didn't have any hot water at all, so. Okay. Sounds like a lack of circulation. Okay, I'm gonna go upstairs. Well, this is mental, isn't it? Almost 7,000 subscribers and almost a million views on the channel. I'm blown away, so I'd loved 10,000 by the end of the year, by Christmas, but I hold, um, I'm just speechless already. Anyway, so on to this week's video. So we got a valent, clearly, from a tiny snippet from the other week of what the issue was, and you all guessed all sorts of different things. Um, so this week we will find out the conclusion of what the hell it was. Now Valiant were asked to come and do a fixed repair on this but they declined when the guy turned up because it was too high off the ground. Ironically they fixed it six years previously but then they said that the laws and the HSE had changed. I don't care. So long as I'm getting work out of this stuff you can make up the rules as you go along guys. So for me turned up and it was a catalogue of errors I thought every single time that I'd got it anyway I don't want to spoil the fun and that have a laugh probably at my expense as per usual but um hope you're all staying well and don't take the piss out of my legs ta-da see you later Let's go to work. Okay, so we've just taken the pump out. Six months old. Turn the head off. Let's have a look in here. Trouble. Just pull this apart. It's a really shit casting to begin with. But okay, let's have a look at this loft tank. So it's been thrown up over there. So I've sucked it all out. Nice and clean. It's a bit slimy there. So how do you bung a tank? First thing you do is put a cap on the vent. Second thing you do is get yourself one of these. Pass it through. This is the Nerad jet sweat. Great fan of these. When they're tight, that's a hundred percent. That's it. Blocked cold feed. The water comes up here, comes through here, and down to the pump. Yeah. But in this case, what it's doing is it's coming around that corner, and then it's going up that vent, going through the tank, and then it's coming back down this cold feed here. We're going to chop in between. Let's see if we can find it. So just as a check, if you get a magnet and put it up the pipe, you get an idea. There you go. See so what? I'll get a better shot of it. Because you're all going, what are you talking about? That's what I'm talking about. Get the idea? So that's a new feed from the tank. And I'm just going to open it up and check it. So 
So we've got a power flushing machine set up, twin mags, heating element on the other side. And would you believe, it's a 31 kilowatt heat exchange. So I'm gonna power flush this. We're gonna see what it does, turn the heater on, which will then activate chemical or lock quick. And then we'll give the inside of a bit of a clean. But I've got a client who has essentially, his has gone down. A new one of these is about five or 600 pounds. Recondition, call it whatever you like on this and see what it does. Yeah, watering. We've got no leaks. This is the only time I'm ever going to use this scale breaker FX. The reason being is that this stuff is incredibly hard to get out of systems. It's incredibly potent, but it's incredibly difficult to get completely out of a heat exchanger and a heating system with dog legs and all sorts of stuff. So this is the one time. So I'll introduce this and because I can flush this and rinse this and do it just on the heat exchanger I can guarantee it'll all come out and I can guarantee also that that inside will be thoroughly cleaned over seven or eight hours of me just running it whilst I clean out the van so here we go and we'll wait for it to pass around the heat exchanger there you go it's already coming through and let the pink miracle do its work so sometimes when it's breaking up the scale you find that it gets very foamy and very aerated and the aeration is just the, the acid attacking the scale, foams up and creates a foamy. And you can see a little bit in there, but as it goes on, once it's finished descaling everything, it should go. And I'll keep reversing the flow. So with a reverse on this, this is the beauty of the Camco. When you reverse it, you can see what's going on in here very clearly. And these are all Camco products. And no, I'm not sponsored or endorsed or anything by Camco. As I say, this is the only time I'll ever use this. This and on um, cast iron heat exchangers, but you have to be prepared to rinse thoroughly, do it short term and get it out of the system completely clear. And also, I can even feel it on my hand. There's a tiny, tiny splash, must have come from somewhere and it's killing my hand already. Anyway, I'm going to wash my hands. So I can't even brew in it. <sighs> Puts hairs on your chest. So we got our thermal gun. Okay, so let's do a temperature reading. So up the front, we've got 43 degrees. 43, 43, 43. Sorry, 43. Now I'm going to be honest with you. 10 minutes ago before I hit each one of these coils and added about another litre. This front coil here wasn't performing, it was 23 degrees. So what I did was I got a mallet and tapped it all the way around, tapped it all the way around, reversed the flow, reversed the flow, did all of that and surprised because it's come back to life. So they're all 43 degrees or thereabouts. So this has been on about two or three minutes and you can already see and look at that okay so this has been on for quite some time now I can get it clean on the inside it's much cleaner and this is generating a load of heat without the element in so 45 degrees it's pretty darn tidy now this is one, and then it goes out there. That's the out, so you got one, and then it goes out there. There you go. Anyway, it's coming to get me. Sorry, I'll stop it now. For, like I said before, five coils. How do we check to make sure that we've done what we think? That if any of these are blocked, it could have a little bit of flow to a certain point, but at the other part, it won't have any flow. So in theory, the initial temperature should cease. So if we take our little heat thing and start at the beginning, 38 degrees. You can see with each of these coils, you know, this is from manufacture. I mean, look at that for a twist and a bend. Put some heat through it, see where the block oil is. That's how you do it. OK, 
get himself an ex spotless in there. Who would have ever thought it? <laughs> and as you said, if that 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 had put a new heat strain in, we'd still be back to square one, wouldn't we? Ah, uh, yeah. We used to be good to go on this for quite some time. It's had a full service now. Is where your main burner seal goes. Seal there that stops any water coming forward. There's a tilt on this and that's where the condense collects and drains away. So this is a 2013, been in about seven years. It's stainless, so non-magnetic. It's all good grade. Two headers on this, one on the left, one on the right, because as you can see, it's leaking. That's where the seal goes at the back. Will be a split in this so one side will be flow one side will be return okay so let's take this one here this one will flow around the coil come back to this side here go through that back to this side and swap over and vice versa so if any one of these gets blocked it will naturally just push to the other you only got to block one of these and you'll get that variation of sound and noise. This front section is silicon on. This is high temperature silicon, red. Bad day at the office that one. They put these divots on to keep the spacing but in certain places you can see it's very different. The sizes, they seem to vary a hell of a lot. So from a very large ball down 